watched AFC Bournemouth's new recruit, Dean Housen, play 45 minutes of football. And from that, we learned a hell of a lot. Welcome to Back of the Net. My name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. This is part two of our USA review. As soon as we got back, a new signing was revealed. And like we said on Twitter, like we said on the last show, you could have put your house on it because we knew it was coming. Fabrizio Romano put it out there. There was lots of conjecture on Twitter. But finally, Mm. it was revealed. Plus, in this video, we're going to be talking about the potential new away and third kits. What's it going to look like? We cannot wait to see it. Tom, yes. welcome back to the show. We haven't changed our shirts. We're, we're here on another day, a separate day, mm. and we haven't changed kits. Yeah, we're in it. Yeah, we're in it. Um, yeah, this might be a double header. Might, it? might be a double header. And also, what else is a double header is our two friendlies that we've got. We need to talk about the games against mm. Girona and Real Vallecano as well, of course the latter being Andoni Iriola's old club. If you're brand new here, welcome. We're back on the net. We're an AFC Ball with Fan channel. And if you want to do us a favour, there's a couple of things you can do. Big fun. Yep. It's called a like. Click that. That really helps us for some way. I don't know how. Um, click the bell. And then every time there's a video, it'll tell you. And then most importantly, click subscribe. We'll try and get them numbers up throughout the season. So yeah, really appreciate the support so far. So Dean Howson is the second Dean to play at Dean Court. Yeah, you told me that and I couldn't get it. It's unbelievable how few Deans we've had. It's the like other my one, little comment though that I said, what about Michael Dean? Yeah, no, that didn't count. Didn't count or, or even Justin Dean Cliver. Oh, or whatever. Okay. Doesn't count. Yeah. Who is the other Dean that played at Dean Court, apart from Dean Housen. If you know the answer, put it in the comments below. I saw this name mentioned on Twitter and the Vitals Forum as well, but you might have to go back a bit. I'm just surprised we haven't signed any other Dean right. in the meantime. But this one, <clears throat> he promises to be a star in the making. Not least, he was linked with a few clubs that are Maybe a little bit bigger than us. Yeah, it seems like. I mean, Villa were, were linked for a little bit. And then um, more prominently was Liverpool, wasn't it? So it's kind of getting a little bit worried and thinking, oh, God, it's, if they're coming in. But we obviously um, got the job done and sold the, the dream and all that good stuff. So, yeah, he looks like a real promising player, mate. Um, as you say, watched him for a bit and looks like he's got that kind of defensive qualities, but also the way we want to play and the way Adoni wants to play. It looks like a good fit. Um, good stature about him, uh, looks comfortable on the ball. I know he's he's also played fullback at times. He's also played in defensive midfield occasionally. And um, yeah, he's Spanish under-21 international, even though he was born in the Netherlands and played under-16, under-17, under-18, under-19s for the Netherlands. Um, but he's obviously chose Spain now and he's played a few games for the under-21s already, which, you know, a lot of the time I think you kind of go, oh, OK, if they play for the under-21s. But when it's Spain, it's one of the best, um, that... That's definitely says something and yeah, done really well at Rome on loan. So yeah, it's a really exciting one, mate. And I'm looking forward to, to seeing him in action. Yeah, he speaks four different languages. He's a, he's a, he's a young lad, as we know. Mm. He's, but he's very mature. He's age 19. His birthday is, uh, 14th of April, 2005. That's his day of birth, mate. Oh. 2005. That doesn't even, I nearly mean, left school he saw one, the eh? 2004 yeah. euros. Like, mm. what? my goodness. It's crazy. Isn't it? However, mm. Where's he going to fit in? How's he going to play? And look, we, uh, we or I watched mm. 45 minutes of him I watched 38 playing. and then I had to leave. Yeah, of course you did. But you know what? Uh, he, he was at Juve and then he was going to be loaned out to Frosinone in Serie A. But he sort of um, changed his mind. Uh, a slight influence of uh, maybe Mourinho made him join Roma, where I think the fans really took to him. Scored a few goals for him, got forward, scored a goal, that goal. We've all seen that goal on social media. But I watched the first half of that game, the whole of it, and I noticed Lloyd Kelly vibes. Really? Lloyd Kelly vibes. And you know what? The way that Roma were playing was very much like Andoni Areola's Bournemouth. So he should fit into our system like a glove. The only thing that remains to be seen is... Would he be that kind of Lloyd Kelly player, left-sided central defender? Would we ever revert to a three? Or could he play left side? I'm sensing mm. it could be all three. But maybe when we play as a three, that's maybe in-game rather than starting as a three at the back, do you reckon? Yeah, potentially. We we said that in the couple of pre-season games we saw, um, particularly in that Wrexham game. It was quite evident that 
Lewis was actually dropping in to make it a free when we had the ball a lot of the time so the fullbacks could bomb on etc so I think it's one that in game you want players that can be flexible I've always said it a lot with with Tavernier for example he's a winger but really because he can do that wing back role as well it kind of makes you a bit more versatile and fluid and I do wonder sometimes you know say for example you've got Max Aaron's trying to bomb on down the right if Housen say starting at left back he would then tuck in and you go to a naturally go to a three but um yeah it sounds like we'll have to wait and see i think he's you know prominently um predominantly sorry a center back but listen we've got two really really good center backs um in zabani and senesi always good to have competition um but the fact he can also play fullback is a real benefit and he can sit in front of them as well so it'd be really interesting to see where we deploy him um and don't be surprised us all many times whether that be watara left back ryan christie into a double pivot at midfield um he's even in the rexon game but been in up front you know we've we've seen a few different things so i don't want to predict it too much but the fact that he's got that bit of versatility and when you're a young age you can you could probably be quite comfortable to mold him into one of them yeah. more so so yeah really really exciting as you say every little bits and little clips and stuff i've watched of him uh, what i like about him is that you said it he looks like he fits into what we're trying to do. And that's what, you know, you could sign top players, but sometimes you sign them and go, how does that work? You know, I, I always go back to Kiefer Moore. Yeah. Kiefer Moore is a bloody good player. Uh, whatever anyone thinks. As soon as he went to Sheffield United, I went with Sheffield United up. Yeah. Um, as soon as he went to Ipswich, I went, they'll get the job done now. And they did. And, but I prefer us getting Jebison. Yeah. Jebison's not as good as Kiefer Moore yet. But he will play the way Andoni wants to play. And I think that's just the way it is. I think Kiefer Moore could have potentially worked if we had kept Gary O'Neill, for example. So you've got to get players that fit the mould. And that's what I like about Houghton. As soon as I saw him, I thought, that's a defender that Andoni will like. Mm. So I like that recruitment. And who knows if the Roma, the fact he went alone, went to Roma on loan, if that helped us just because of Pinto. Um, we've also had Clive off him in the past. We've had Vina yeah. on loan. So we seem to have had a few from Roma. I don't know if that helped us a little bit. Who knows? But um, Or maybe that made us look at him a little bit more. Mm. But yeah, really exciting one, mate. I decided to watch the first 45 minutes because yes, he scores a goal in that game where Roma were away to Frosinone. And it was a game that I thought would be almost like a pressure cooker situation for him because their fans were not overly happy with him for disregarding them yeah. and then him joining Roma. So they were on his back from the start and I just wondered how he would cope in that first half. And I've got to say, he coped admirably, scoring an absolute worldie of a goal. And like I sort of said, was... He reminds me of Lloyd Kelly because he's not the polished, no. perfect product yet. In his first touch, he was sort of loose with it. He gave the ball away and then had to put in a thundering tackle to win it back. His distribution at times wasn't great, but then as the game went on, he grew into it really well. He was cool and calm and composed on the ball. I think Frosinone, they got a, a corner early doors and he's quite, I don't know how tall he is. 6'5", I think. Is he 6'5"? He's quite, yeah, he's quite lanky. So he could mm. put his foot in and they had an early corner that was fired in towards the near post and he stepped across, mm. defended that well. He's strong. He's quite pacey. He's very good at picking up the ball and then moving forward with it as well. And a bit like Sanessi as well. Yeah, Sinesi that's right. And, you know, a lot of the times I think Bournemouth have been criticised, maybe more under Gary O'Neill. Sometimes we did it under Iriola for the this kind of horseshoe shape we tend to play in. One centre-back plays it to the other. They yeah. play it to the left-back. It goes back. He will happily take the ball and drive forward and try to find the feet of a Lewis Cook, a Ryan Christie, even a Justin Cliver that's coming deep. Mm. So I thought he looked really, really exceptional at that. And like I said, they, they sort of play similar to us in that they did play with a flat back four, but quite often it turned into almost a three yeah. with the deep line midfielder Drop. coming back like Lewis Cook did. And then he naturally pushed over to the left-hand side. So yeah, he, was, like he was using that flank quite a lot. And that's what Lloyd Kelly did really well. So we've got a like-for-like -like replacement. And it seems from conversations I've had with football fans that aren't Bournemouth fans, they, th they think that the signing that we've got is a really, really good signing. Yeah. And he's certainly one for the future. And we've tied him down for, what, six seasons or so? Yeah, it's very impressive. Uh, Sam, we've done that with a few of them now, which is, yeah, which is really intelligent um, business, getting them on the long-term contracts. I do think that the Lloyd Kelly situation and then maybe even previously the Jefferson Lerma situation has um, made the new ownership, you know, appreciate that then players you could say you would have got over 50 million for the pair comfortably mm. and we've got nothing um because of their contracts running out so yeah that's that's a really good sign and yeah and i think losing lloyd kelly getting someone in um to replace him kind of like for like and with potentially a higher ceiling we don't know but it seems that way i, I saw one kind of podcast um thing where there was a couple of guys and they were talking before he signed for bournemouth 
and they were saying that he could be the best in the world. Yeah, well, we sat in the top 10 of Serie A centre-backs for, for goals, shots and successful passes that's and a, touches in the 23-24 season. That's a league that is known for their defen- defenders, yeah. Serie A. So he would have developed a lot. And I think I mentioned you earlier, if Jose Mourinho signed you as a defender, you're a good defender. Yeah. Because Jose Mourinho prides himself on getting good defenders. So I think they're, they're all real positive signs, mate. And yeah, the fact that he's played... Um, predominantly in Serie A, I think it's a really good sign as well because, as I say, they're they're known for their defensive attributes. So you wonder what this means for players like Chris Meppham? Yeah, I do wonder if Mepps make... It depends what Mepps wants, I think, because I think we would all be happy to go, Mepps, your backup, hell of a backup. Mm. But Mepps has been backup for a long time. Even in the Championship, uh, we had you know Nat Phillips with him, we had uh, Cahill for yeah. a bit, and obviously still had Kelly. So he's back up then. He's never let us down, though, has he? Never really, really let us down. Um, I think James Hill, they'll look at more as the future, though. Mm. It will depend on Chris Meppham. Does Chris Meppham, is he so happy here that he's happy to just bide his time playing cups and, and play when there's injuries? Or does he go, I've got to a point now, you know, I want to keep myself in that Wales squad, um, new manager coming in, I want to make sure I'm still, um, you yeah, know, one of the main men there. I need to go out on loan or I need a permanent move away. There'll certainly be suitors in the championship, I would have thought. Um, and I, I, I even jokingly said it's probably a little bit too low for him, but I was thinking about it when we played him. I thought, Welsh, Wrexham have got a bit of, he would be one of the best centre halves in League One. Just imagine. But either way, I think you know whatever happens with Maps, if he decides he wants to go and play football, I, I respect that totally, and he, he'd be well. He's always be well thought of here. But if he's happy to just bide his time, then I think that's that's good news as well because he's a he's a top backup to have. Uh, not many, I think people there was a not not many mid table ish Premier League clubs would have as good a fourth centre half yeah, choice, yeah. and that's discounting James Hill, who could potentially be be above him in the pecking order now. I'm not sure, but. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what we do with that because I think there's been a lot of murmurings with Sheffield United who have just signed Kiefer Moore. Yeah. So there's a link there as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, wait and see. But I think either way, I think we could cope if Meps went now because we've got Zabani, Sanessi, Howson and James Hill. Mm. If Meppen weren't to go, could would Hill maybe go out on loan again? I'm not sure. Yeah. That remains to be seen. But that, that would be one that I think we'll yeah, we'll see a bit of action potentially. In terms of Housen, in October twenty twenty three, there was a report on footballtalentscout.net and it highlighted some very interesting characteristics about Housen, saying in terms of acceleration, he can close down gaps quickly and when he gets going, he's tough to shake off the ball. Certainly reminds me of Lloyd Kelly. I thought you were saying it reminds you of yourself on a Sunday night. And that. With the ball, Housen has some qualities that make him a desirable addition to any system. First of all, he's completely two-footed as well in terms of line-breaking passes, long balls, tackles, and he can do it with both feet as well. He's got the proven capability to play in a back three where he's formed strong partnerships with the likes of Mancini, Gioan Luca, of course, uh, Diego Lorente, and also Evan and Dicker as well. So it yeah. shows that yeah. he's a very versatile player. And a lot of people, some people have suggested, does this indicate that this could mean Iriola may be switching to a three, but you're saying you perhaps can't see that? Not from the off I think it's one of them that you'll see happening in game a few times definitely I think people forget it did there were a few times last season where if you watched it Lewis dropped back into a three at times and I think particularly it does depend on the personnel but particularly if you've got a Milos Kerkes who is playing fullback he ain't a fullback he wants to bomb off so this could be a positive influence for uh, for Milos it could easily you could easily see as you just mentioned he's he's both footed and I know he's played right back as well you could easily see a, it look like from right to left House and Zavani Sanessi Kirkes mm. but because per- Kirkes bombs on so much they all slide over and it's basically a three yeah. and if on the right hand side of your your wide option it's Tavernier well he's quite comfortable to play wing back yeah. so it gives you a lot of options Dango Batara is quite comfortable playing yeah. on the wing and wing back so I think he's getting a lot of players that can, can fill in a lot of areas which so you'll see a lot of fluidity in our play which is what he likes anyway He's got a license to roam, which is good. And we've seen him bomb forward. He picked up the ball on the halfway line in the 38th minute in that aforementioned game against Frosinone. Went forward and what an exquisite finish. Did you see mm. the way he just mm. caressed it Brilliant. with the, the inside of his right foot into the, into the goal there? And this is a player that likes to get forward and score goals. And Didi said that with his mm. interview with Zoe Rundle, his, his welcome interview on AFCB. TV. He's a man of few words, I would say. Some short answers, but he's succinct with it as well. We use the phrases exciting football, progressive. That's how he likes to play. 
in terms of the team, he said, I like to think that we can beat the records. We've kept our key players. So that leaves me feeling a little bit more positive about Dom Solanke. Please stay. Uh, hopefully we can strive to push something, he said. In terms of his game, defensively, I have improved. And he mentioned Mourinho being a positive influence. He likes to play attacking football. This club is going upwards. It's all the things that we want to hear. But it all seems very much in tune with yeah. the club's vision of playing football. And the fact that he also speaks... Dutch, Spanish, Italian and English. It means mm. he'll be able to chat to everyone in that team. No problem at all. Yeah, that's, that's a big plus, of course. We've got a few players in there that are obviously learn the language and stuff, but we've, we've got a few that can speak a lot of languages. He actually sp- spoke English really well, I thought. Mm. Um, but yeah, everything he said, like you say, quite short and sharp, but precise answers and um, all positive signs. I think when you're getting these highly rated younger players... That just that speaks volumes that, that they think the club's going in the right direction. Mm. Um, you know, if you're a player like Dean Alson, who you know, if you wait around there, you can get Premier League football. That is the aim for most players playing the Premier League. You ain't going there if you think you might not be there for long. Mm. You might go down. So it's, yeah, really positive. Some of us were concerned. I'd say some of us, because that's probably accurate, when Richard Hughes, of course, up sticks and went to Liverpool. And we did think that Simon Francis is, whilst he's sat under Richard for, for quite a while, we wondered kind of how much nous he's got in that department. Well, it seems that with the addition of Thiago Pinto, who is obviously pivotal, I know we tweeted the picture of, of Frano, as you would, because he is a living legend. And, and by the way, way huh? you just, you just no, that so gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> we saw him at a training session, he walked past and we went, gee, ooh. Go on, Frano. Tell you what, I mean, Sermon got a lot of credit back in the day, but Frano was, <laughs> that is weird. That is really weird. We are straight. <laughs> but it's nice that he's got that support with him as well. And he was there with uh, Frano at the yes, um, open it. training thing as well. And um, that kind of influence that he's got, and Foley means business when he says he, he's going to get the best in the business. That's what we seemingly have. Look, it's early days, of course, and we're only judged by what happens on the pitch. But from what the outside world is saying, even yeah. if you cut through the noise, it sounds like we've got an absolute gem on our hands. Definitely. And the squad as a whole looks seems to be shaping up quite it nicely. Looks good. You'd say the only key player we lo- we've lost is Laurie Kelly, and yeah. we've literally replaced him with... Yeah, and we all would have taken that replacement, I think, when you read and look at everything that you've just mentioned. Um, we've lost a few fringe players, which I, I knew we would anyway. We had quite a, a bulky squad with a lot out on loan. So Jamal Lowe's moved on permanently. Um, and obviously mentioned Kiefer Moore there. Joe Rothwell's gone back on. So there's a few like, for, but they, no disrespect, they weren't going to be involved. Um, and we've actually weirdly gained Brooks and Anthony at the moment. Yeah. Back from their loans. Um, so Unal's obviously been made permanent and we've got Jefferson in. So we've got some, and young goalkeepers in. So we're obviously, thinking about a few younger players. I don't know how much more, if we kept everyone, which I really hope we do, into, I'm only really thinking of, I know you said Mets, but I'm thinking of like them real first team core players. I'm only what worried or cautious about Solanke and Kirkes. Yeah. I think if we keep both of them, I don't think we need a lot. No. I don't think we need a lot. Um, it, you know, we'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see, but I know personally what I would want, but, I would, if we went into the season with this current squad, I wouldn't be too disappointed. It seems like the future is bright. And that phrase is maybe apt when talking about the colour of potentially our next kit release. But we did see a tweet, Mm. uh, which we're putting on screen now, which may suggest Mm. that uh, if we do have a kit launch, the likes of uh, Just Stop Oil will not be stopping it in any way that would probably be contributing to it if it did um look let's not talk about the third for now because this morning the away shirt tom was released and you know what it seems to be from reading some of the tweets this morning an absolute hit as the website says afc bournemouth take another look back into their history for the 24-25 away kit with inspiration being taken from the cult classic shirt seen in the early 90s. It's a bit of a green and purple number and I've got to say from the pictures that I've seen conversely like usually it's the other way around I really like it from what I've seen. In the flesh will I feel different? I'm not so sure but that's another one we'll be doing a special video on out in the next few days. So what's that? That's now Four kits we've had. Feels like we've already bought out a million already. Well, there's going to be one for the Newcastle game yeah. as well. And we've seen pictures of that. It's got a special crest on. I think yeah. you can have it boxed for like 125 quid. 125 is the is the amount now. Pay that for the meal. 
pen mm. for a, a boxed shirt. It's got like Bournemouth versus Newcastle on it. How apt, by the way, that it is Newcastle. Oh. How apt. I like. How apt. Mm. But it is though, isn't it? It is. It is indeed. Yeah, no. It will... Yeah, nice, nice to put a little the 125 years on it. So make a special shirt for that. We've obviously got the uh, Michael B. Jordan shirts so that we're wearing at the friendlies. And yeah, we're just waiting for a couple more now. Someone and, uh, tweeted yesterday that um, I can't, you know, I'm waiting for these shirts, and then all of a sudden it seems like I've got to spend up to 500 quid on every available shirt. There is. You don't have to buy every single one. No, really you don't, don't have to. We and you, you know what? I don't even like them all. Um, out of the Michael B. Jordan shirts, I think I prefer the black one over the red. So one. I do as well. Um, yeah, well. And then much, I'm though. indifferent. Uh, I don't know. I think I'll have to wait to see the home one in the flesh, which will be yeah. out on August the 3rd. The third kit's always a bit wacky, isn't it? They normally, yeah, you can normally kind of throw caution to the wind a little bit of a third yeah. kit. And I don't mind that at all. I think most clubs do that. Um, we've seen a few new kits from different clubs and there's a few that I like, few I don't like. And I actually think on the whole, um, for a long, long time, we've done well with our kits. We always have done. So I'm confident. I'm always confident with Bournemouth kits because... I think it's rare that you find one that you go, oh, it's horrible. I, I've, I've always quite liked our kits, um, which cost me more money, but I, I'm pleased. Did you see the Arsenal one, by the way, or you would have? Um, that it looks almost like a Lynx Africa. Yes, bottle. it does. Yeah, black and then you have kind of reds and greens. And, and then you see it in person, you think, that's just quite cool. Yeah. Uh, so, like yeah, it. I think it's one of them with the, with the home kit. I want to see it in, in the flag. Yeah, and a lot of clubs seem to have gone with the sort of retro badges as well mm. this year as well. I think the, the Toffees on one of their shirts have just got the turret. It's just a shape. Newcastle have gone for a, an older logo. I think Leeds have got one as mm. well. So um, it seems to be the season to be doing all that. I think but, a lot of people now, I, I was thinking it when you kind of just have the Euros and you watch England games, you got this New England kit out. Most people wear retro shirts. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And, and I do, and you know me, I've got loads of bloody shirts, but I wouldn't, I would definitely wouldn't buy the new Real Madrid shirt, but I might buy the Real Madrid shirt from 1994. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? I, I think there is a thing about retro now, so I think uh, clubs are buying into it a little bit. You know what shirt Tom got me? Tom, do you want to go get it? Oh, yeah, sure. Tom bought me um, uh, a lovely shirt as a, as a thank you for doing all the driving and all the admin bits. Look at this. Cork City. Cork City. I cannot wait Sponsor. to be wearing that. Is Sponsored it? by Guinness. Sponsored by Guinness? Yeah. Love, love it. So look, at some point, I'm going to be wearing this bad boy as well. <laughs> Cannot wait for that. Right then, two friendlies coming up. Yeah. Firstly, we're going to be playing Real Vallecano, which is on the mm -hmm. 4th. That's on the, on the Sunday. It's a 3 p.m. kickoff, is it? It is. And as you can probably see, we're at the QP. <laughs> and you can get here beforehand. Make sure you do, because it's the usual pre-match fare. Get all your, your burgers and chicken burgers and stuff. There's going to be plenty of Cherries fans yeah, here. Yeah. And um, have, have a drink with us. We are really looking forward to being here for that. And of course, after that, Saturday, the games are six days apart, Girona as well, which has been moved to a 5.15 kickoff. I think it was later, but they mm. need to get a flight back like that, yeah. in preparation to for one of their fixture changes mm. or something like that. So they can be flying back the same night. We've got Girona Two on the 10th as well. Like so and then Andoni Areola facing his old club. Yeah. Uh, and then playing Girona, who are Champions League material, mate. Well, yeah, I was just getting it up now just to be sure. Yeah, I was right. They did come third. So if you're in Spain and the only teams that come above you are Real Madrid and Barcelona, that's not bad. You're doing all right. Only four points below Barcelona, by the way. That's decent. They finished five clear of four for Flatcam Madrid. Yeah. So really impressive. So that's actually a local derby, really, Girona and Barcelona for them, because they're only like a couple of hours apart. Yeah, apart. so that's going to be... I'm, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing them as well. Um, and see some of their players. I was looking, I was just making sure. Yeah, Daly Blinn's there. Mm. So, um, yeah, he's, he's quite a well-known face. And they've got um, Donny van der Beek, who's yeah. at United as well. So they've got a, a really exciting squad. So that'll be a real test. And, and the Vallecano game, they're kind of probably similar to us in the Premier League, maybe a little bit lower in terms of that kind of mid-table, lower-off uh, type team. But obviously, Andoni will know a lot of them. They haven't changed too much since he's left. Um, but I think they're two games where we're going to be playing teams that play football. Mm. And I think they could be really good spectacles because I think it would be, um, yeah, just really kind of end to end stuff, mm. really good, really good. So, um, looking forward, looking forward to them both. I think that they'll be tricky games, mm. but that's, that's what you want, mate. You, you need them type of games. Yeah. Really looking forward to that. Maybe a chance to see, um, some of the kits that we've not seen worn before, especially if you didn't travel. So rumors at the MBJ, by the way, I don't know why we can say MBJ and no one frowns upon it, but if you take away the M, everyone's up in arms about it, but we might see one of his kits and maybe if there is another launch between now and the Girona game, we might be seeing that 
too. But um, it'd be nice for, of course, Ariel to see his old club. Yeah. I'm sure he's excited about isn't, that. A few old faces. Isn't the manager the one that we were going to get as our assistant? Yeah. So that'd be interesting. So it's yeah. real funny to get to see him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Has he got a work permit to be here? Yeah, he's finally turned up at Dean Court. So yeah, we're really, really looking mm. forward to them. But regardless, we're going to be at the QP. So make sure you get down here. And when this season starts, we're going to be back to doing what we do best with them, including competitions. Come the on, raffle man. will be on. Mate, it's going to be a procession of yeah. football. Come and on, so we good. are going to be there to cover it. We cannot wait. Oh, Expectations oh, for this season. Tell what me. what do you Don't is it is it just look too early to mention Europe, maybe? I don't know, maybe. Um or is it just you know I've got a passport at the moment. <laughs> is it just improve on points, so what table we, position, whatever? Yes, yeah, so what we've done fifteenth then twelfth. Yeah. Since the owners come in. So yeah, you're probably looking at trying to get top ten if you can, if you look at it that way. Um it's probably the I reckon so. I know we finished ninth once. With Eddie Howe, um, I never expected to finish there. No. So I think the, this is probably the most expectations in the Premier League we've ever had yeah. as a football club. I think that's fair to say. Equally, I'm always kind of, you know, let's just make sure we're all right. Let's just calm down. Let's keep it, keep it ticking along nicely. Um, if we're kind of getting into that January period and, and we're knocking on the door for top 10, I'll take it. And I look at, you, you got that kind of big six, if you like. You look at them, you add in Villa. You potentially add in Newcastle mm. and you go, okay, there's a few there. You look at West Ham, they've strengthened all right. Could we be the next one? Potentially. I think we could. And, and you've only got to look at Brighton quite recently. Yeah. You know, so could we knock on the door a little bit? We could. And I, I get why now it's changed quite quickly and it's weird, isn't it? So why the media? You are, how the hell have little old Bournemouth got rid of Gary O'Neill? They're a disgrace. They're going down next year. Now yes. they could come to eight. Was, so did we make a good decision then? Well, there you go. And look. What do you think? Where do you actually think we'll come? I, I'm going to say now, 10th. Well, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say that. Okay. Ninth. Oh, well, Just to be different. Um, a little cup. Quite, tenth and a little cup run. It's quite interesting though. You know, people are starting to spend now. Here's a, here's a question mm. for you. I was listening to the JLA FC space that Ben Phillips did a fantastic job on. And they did this thing at the end where they were, um, whittling the 20 fans down by asking general knowledge questions mm -hmm. down to one. You know where Ben Phillips finished? Like, he's definitely got Champions League. Third. Yeah. Good lad. Good lad. And, but the question that did him uh, was out of all know, the Premier so yeah, out of all the Premier League clubs this season that have got new managers. Yep. So new manager this season than last season. Which Premier League team has spent the most money in the transfer window so far? That have got a new manager. Yeah, yeah they've got a new manager. Well, I know it's not Liverpool because they haven't got anyone. Um, I don't want to take too long on this. I'm just automatically going, it's got to be Chelsea, but maybe it's not. Or could it be West Ham? Who have they bought in there? And I'm still there. I'll go Chelsea, but I haven't thought about it too much. Who's West Ham? No, oh, was it? West Ham. Tell you Who was it they signed for a lot of money? I'm forgetting who it was now. I don't know, but they, they seem to be... So, and oh, they, they just uh, signed um, Somerville yeah. from, from Leeds. Ah, they've just signed Somerville. That's so, a good sign, isn't it? That's a great sign. 25 million as well. I, I swear they initially offered more and it was turned down. And then because... Back away, yeah. yeah. Um, they look, they're trying to get, um, oh, that's it. They've got Max Kilman from, yeah. uh, Wolves as well. They're trying to get full crew, the striker for Germany. So with, um, with Lopetegui at the helm, it'd be really interesting to see how they do. I've got a feeling they might be trying to push above, but this could be a season of transition for them as well. But either way, yeah. it's going to be an exciting season. You Did Ben say Chelsea, by the way? For what? Answered. Well, that question, you said that was the one that stumped him. Did he I say? I think he went for Brighton. Oh, okay. Okay. But yeah, yeah, I just instantly thought Chelsea with Mariska, but yeah. I don't know. Um, what. so you know what we've got to do soon? What's that? Our league table prediction show. Oh, God. It's always hard, isn't it, that? So we're going to be doing that, and maybe you'll stick to your guns with your 10th. Maybe I will with your 9th. There's another reason to subscribe. Mm. However you've taken this show in, whether you've been watching or whether you've been listening, we truly appreciate your time. We'll be doing a little vloggy-woggy for the um, Valacano game. No fan cams. No fan cams, but yeah, we'll be doing a little vlog, nothing too strenuous because we've got a fair few videos to get out between now and the start of the season. There's lots to do, mate, but, um, there is, mate. A couple of kit reactions as well. And yeah, interviews probably, yeah. and stuff. So yeah, it's all coming out. So. Yeah, no, nice, man. It'll soon come round, wouldn't it? Yeah, just go to the free point ground. I can't wait for it, mate. It's all starts, doesn't it? Happy days. Happy days. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you in the next one. Up the cherries. Up the cherries. Oh, lovely.